From the Opubco Studios at Britain and Broadway, you're listening to a News OK podcast. Hi, I'm Ken Raymond, staff writer for The Oklahoman. I'm here, here, I'm here today with uh, Captain Steve McCool of the Oklahoma City Police Department. Hello, Captain. Hello. Uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about the Orbach homicide case. Uh, I guess July 1st is the 25th anniversary of this unsolved homicide. That's right. It's coming up uh, July 1, uh, 25 years, 1982. Hmm. Have there been many leads in this case over the years? No, there really hasn't. After the initial investigation and running out what few leads we had, that's what's a little bit uh, uh, different in this case. There really wasn't a lot of physical evidence, if any, uh, that was left at the scene. Well, take us back, if you will, a little bit through what actually happened that day. Um, well, we were called out to, uh, to the residents uh, here in Oklahoma City, um, an elderly couple, Cyril Orbach and his wife Christine Orbach. Uh, he was 87 years old. She was uh, 67 years old. Uh, they were found beaten um, in their home. Um, there was approximately $150,000 worth of jewelry that was known to have been kept in the safe in the home that was missing. Um, uh, and so the you know the investigators began their investigation there at the scene to try to determine uh, just exactly what had occurred. Uh, we did find a witness that indicated they saw a vehicle similar to the Orbox vehicle pull up in front of the home. Uh, they gave a description of an individual who kind of briskly got out of the vehicle and walked uh, up to the house. Um, and, and from there, um, we know that the Orbox were trying to, uh, at that time, sell their home. It was up for sale. Uh, it was valued at approximately $350,000 at that time. Um, as the investigators progressed into the investigation, they learned that, uh, that Miss Orbach was on the telephone uh, with someone who later came forward during the investigation, remembered being on the telephone with Miss Orbach, it was a friend, uh, and she made a comment that someone was at the door um, and that uh, Cyril had, had let them in to show them uh, presumably what we think and theorize is to show them the home, that it was a prospective buyer of the home. Hmm. And instead, they let in apparently their killers. That's what we theorize. We believe that uh, since there was no forced entry into the home, there was no evidence of that, that they uh, had, had let the killers into the home. Hmm. Now, this is a fairly prominent couple. Uh, I believe they were the owners of uh, so, some stores here in Oklahoma. Right. They uh, uh, pretty much started the Orbach uh, clothing store. Uh, matter of fact, Cyril had just recently retired. Um, I believe it's my understanding that he turned it over to uh, uh, his children to continue to to run the store. But he he and his wife had retired uh, from actually running the business. Hmm. So now, one of the vehicles there was a vehicle involved in, in all of this. Uh, was that a some sort of a station wagon? Uh, yes, we believe uh, a witness that was across the street from the victim's home. Um, they observed a blue station wagon very similar um, to that of the victims uh, to park in front of the victim's home. Uh, they described this suspect, a white male, uh, 35 to 40 years of age, about 5 foot 10, 180 pounds, with a reddish complexion um, and light sandy blonde or reddish blonde hair um, to get out of the vehicle and he walked toward the victim's house at a very determined fast pace. Um, that's pretty much the only description of anybody that we have uh, in reference to this case. Do we have any reason at all to believe that maybe there was more than one suspect involved in all of this? Or? Um, that's a possibility because, you know, it's always somewhat difficult sometimes to control two subjects. Um, and so there is a theory that there was possibly two individuals so that both could be controlled, maybe controlling one while they led the other one to the safe to open the safe to get the jewelry out. Well, not to be too graphic, but I understand that the attack on, on these two individuals was, was pretty brutal. Um, yes, it was. They, they, there was evidence, obviously, uh, that they had been beaten. Um, their throats had been cut. Um, and so... Uh, uh, it, it was a very it was a very brutal death. Hmm. Now, the motive, I guess we believe maybe is was robbery. Um, you know, right now that's that's 
that's the only thing we have to go on, the fact that that amount of jewelry is missing. Uh, the house really wasn't disturbed um, in any way except for the room in which they were killed hmm. um, and, and then the jewelry being missing from the safe. Were any of these uh, pieces of jewelry distinctive or anything that people might remember seeing now? Um, you know, I don't believe that I have a list of any of the jewelry that was actually taken, um, so I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we can cut that part. Um, tell me a little bit about the investigation over the years. Uh, you said earlier there really hasn't been much new come forward. Right. Um, after the initial investigation was pretty much um, considered a cold case, when uh, I'll just go over some of the points um, that they came up with, that the investigators came up with at that time. Please. Um, I've already talked about that the, that the home was for sale uh, through a prominent real estate broker. Um, the value of the home, I mentioned at $350,000. Um, that Mr. Orbach uh, had re recently retired from the clothing business, uh, which he started in the Oklahoma City area. Uh, we know that both the victims were very active and religious and very involved in the Christian science faith. That was part uh, that came forward in the investigation. Uh, we know that the home was secured with a loud Rollins alarm um, and situated, their home was situated off of a major street uh, located near to a nearby large shopping center. Um, both victims uh, were found in the office study room of the home. Um, their clothes were uh, blood soaked and they, uh, the body had been turned over probably, uh, we think maybe before death and the male victim had been severely beaten and obviously his throat had been cut. Um, he also had a stab wound. Uh, there were no other wounds that were found on Mr. Orbach. He was fully clothed, no evidence um, 